Oh, this is Real Life and welcome back to the channel and today we're reviewing the Ninja RGB LED strip lights. Estimated running cost just $2.17 per year, 560 aluminums. So what are we getting for our money? Well, first of all, we've got our LED control unit, which looks to have a wide range of functions on it. A strip of LEDs itself. I was going to say this appears to be the transformer, but it's actually called the controller for the LED lights because here we've got a main power transformer. I shall measure out that uh, length of lead in just a second. Now, while we've got some little clips and some screws in there, I'm going to need to read the instruction manual to find out what they're for because the LED lights already appear to have got 3M double-sided tape on the back of them. Another little mini adapter here to do with the uh, power controller, alcohol preparation pad, a user manual, warranty and EU disclaimer, but more to the point, here we have what appears to be our quick start installation guide. Now, I'm quickly going to talk you through the installation steps of the Ninja LED strip lights using the little quick start guide that they've got here. There's a fully detailed instruction manual, which I'm going to read at length because that details what all of these buttons do on uh, the LED controller here. But I think it would be far better if I can fit these to my daughter's bedroom and give you a practical demonstration of just how to install and control the Ninja RGB LED strip lights. Now what it says on the card is you need a dry, clear and smooth surface. So you're not gonna be able to fit this to textured surfaces, you're not gonna be able to fit it to dirty walls and you're not gonna be able to fit it to frosted, frosted glass. But I guess normal glass will be okay. It says warm the tape on here with a hairdryer when it's below 10 degrees centigrade or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm in here in Northern California today. It is, believe me, it's more than warm enough, more than above 10 degrees on here. Now step number three is to do with the alcohol prep pad where you use it to wipe the wall clean to make sure you've got a nice surface to stick the LED light to. Pull the backing off, stick it to the wall and it says then to hold it down for 10 to 15 seconds on there. And step number six, it talks you through what to do on a corner setup. Ah which is what these are for if you need to go around a corner. If you, if you want to fit it to a corner, you're then going to get two of these little plastic parts. You're going to put that over the top. You're going to put the screw through into the wall and you're going to get another one on this side and do exactly the same, screw through onto the wall, linking the corner in place, stopping it from moving around. So it looks to be fairly simple to do and that's installation complete. The only thing it doesn't make any reference to is what this is for. Well, first of all, the transformer wire is about five foot long, I would say. And that plugs into our LED light controller, which I will point out, it's got two screws on it. So you could actually attach that to the wall or a firm piece of wood if you don't. And I would recommend doing that if you don't want that going anywhere. Or you could do it the quick and easy way. Use double-sided tape they've provided on the back of the controller and simply stick it to the wall. Okay, now the LED leads themselves, 16.4 feet in length. I, my daughter actually wants them to go from this corner along here and then down this wall. So we are gonna use two of the corner fixings in order to be able to make that straight run down the wall. And then hopefully just run the control box at the bottom there. Well, the first thing to do is gonna be to take our alcohol prep pad out. And at this point, you are gonna to need to use this fairly quickly because obviously the alcohol will begin to uh, evaporate. So if you leave this out on the side for 10 minutes, the thing's just gonna have dried out. Now this should be a nice clean wall, but let's follow the instructions. Go along here. Also, I think this is only a fairly small pad for doing a 16 foot run, personally. But if you've got a nice clean wall like this one is, then you should be absolutely fine. So it looks to be nice and simple. If you've got fairly nice clean walls, then you might not even to do, need to do this. Now the first thing to do, unwind your LEDs right until the end of the length on there, but stretch it out or get somebody to pull it away from you very gently in order that you're not getting any knots or binding up over itself. So you're giving yourself a fighting chance from the outset. Now, now getting to the end of a reel, I need to peel off, start peeling off the double-sided tape to stick it to the wall. And it is very, very sticky indeed. Peeling the double-sided tape apart, take a great deal of care. Do not just simply try and pull this brown piece back from the end of the wire on here. You need to peel it apart at the top because it has a clear strip. So it looks like that. So that this bit is sticky to the touch. If you're pulling this back and only this is sticky to the touch and not this, it means this piece of tape is still attached to it. You will pull it all off and you will find this will stick to nothing at all. Hope that makes sense on there. Now, 
Bear in mind it says to hold it up against the top for 10 to 15 seconds. You're gonna need a modicum amount of patience to do that. Now I'm gonna to have to put it slightly down the wall to take into account the corner fixing down at that end. Hope that makes sense. So you don't, if, you've got to, if you're gonna go down a corner, like down that wall, you need to leave a gap at the top in order to put those corner fixings in place. Now, there's nothing in this job so far that you couldn't do on your own. I always like in my videos to be able to show that like a single parent can do any of the jobs that I'm doing on their own. And if I can't, I like to show you ways around the problems so that you can. Hope that makes sense. Anyway, let me carry on sticking this along the wall, ideally holding this down for 10 to 15 seconds at a time. Taking a little bit more time than I'm doing here, filming it. And you want to be trying to keep it straight towards the top of that wall, as, as parallel to the top of the wall as possible. Sticking pretty well to the wall actually. Not looking bad. This is more time consuming than anything else. As I say, ideally you want to be holding each part of it down for 10 to 15 seconds, which I'm uh, not doing at the minute, but I'm in a little bit of time pressure today. But do remember, if you need to make a corner, to leave a gap there. If you only realize when you're at this end and you've got it flush to the ceiling, you're gonna have a problem getting it to come down the corner. But just take your time doing this part of the job and that should ensure that it'll run straight along your parallel with your wall and not be at an angle. The one thing being when you peel the tape off be very very careful because it's obviously going to stick to any paint. It's fairly uh, good double sided tape. Now the tricky bit is going to be when it comes to this corner. Now when it comes to the corners and you're going to need your two mounting brackets on here I would recommend you peeled off the double sided tape on the back of the mounting brackets before climbing up onto your ladder, your stool or whatever and get the second one to hand. At this point, if you've not got anywhere to put it, maybe somebody else there to hand it up to you would be a uh, quite a help on here. Put one about there. This is the first time I've done this, so a little bit hit and miss on that, but all being well, it will work out well for people. Just tucking that on the side there. Now for the tricky bit, because we're coming back on ourselves, over the top there. This, you will need a modicum of patience for this. And it also, you're gonna to want to ensure that you're gonna be coming straight down the wall. So I'm a little bit further over than I needed to be. Now my second double-sided fixing is gonna go on there. And press those down nice and firmly. So that is what the corner should look like. Hope that makes more sense now. I've done a practical demonstration on it. Now, I wanna be very careful because I wanna be running straight down the edge. Now, the same as before, just pressing, peeling and holding, ideally for 10 to 15 seconds. As I said, there's nothing at the minute here that one person could not do on their own. Just time and a bit of patience. And I'm not always the most patient of people but hopefully I can be when showing people what to do in this type of video. You need to keep pulling the tape back on there, pull maybe six inches at a time on there so you're not getting too big a piece to work with. Pull another six inches back, pull that down. And I think, all being well, we're gonna have just enough and I'm not gonna have to go around the corner at the bottom. I ideally want this to finish just before the bottom of the wall. And I'm wondering if we may have to go around a corner at the bottom. Just take your time to ensure it's going parallel with whatever surface you're putting it against, like the edge of this frame or a window. The one thing you might wanna do every now and again is 
ditch some of that packaging. Ditch is ditch some of the tape there. Well, there we go. With luck, more than measuring, and that's a very good piece of luck there, Ridgey boy. It's gone right the way along from that end where my daughter wanted it, right the way to the top, down the corner, down to that side. So we've got it going completely to the bottom. So let me wire the transformer in, get some power to that. So what I'm gonna do at this stage, plug the controller in, take the double-sided backing off. I'm gonna get this cable so it sits just off of the floor so you're not bashing into it if you're doing any hoovering or anything like that. Give it a little bit of slack, don't pull it super tight so it's the damage the wire at that end. Placing that on there, I'm actually gonna get another bracket and stick it to the wall at this end like that. You, maybe if you've got one or two spare you could put them both on there and that will then stop this pulling up the wall and moving up there in any way. So I'd definitely put one of those at that end locating it. Also occurs to me we could put one right at that top end as well. Time for some power. As I said there's about five and a half feet on the power cord which should be more than enough. I need to go and read the instructions, find out how we power them up and how to use this remote. Well I've finally got the Ninja LED lights up and working. To start with they weren't coming on. If you've plugged them in, you've got power to the unit, you don't have to do anything with the keypad at all. You need to reverse the wire. If the lights are not on, reverse this wire around because LED lights are only on DC. So if the wire is the wrong way around, they simply won't come on and you might think they're broken, but they're not. So if yours don't come on, simply swap these two plugs around. Simply reverse the direction of this plug here. Now when it comes to controlling the lights, you can set them very, very easily using the control pad on here. There is different colors, which I can leave you to play around with. Uh, you leave your children to play around with, to their heart's content. Got, we've got various different programming options on here. Flashing, which would drive me crazy after a while. You can only seem to flash them in white. Press auto, and that flashes between the different colors in there, giving like a disco effect. We've got fade. I believe they're just gonna fade on and off in between the different colors. That's quite nice. Hopefully that's coming out well on camera. And as I say, you've got lots of functionality on the control pad, but I will leave it. But if you get these, I would recommend simply playing around with it. The instruction manual, while it's quite useful, is in incredibly small print on here. You can dim the lights. You can increase the brightness of them using the buttons on here. When you're done, all you've got to do is hit the on up, turn them off, is hit this switch here. Well, I hope you like my review and installation video of the Minja LED strip lights on it. Very, very easy to assemble. My only note would be if the lights, LED lights don't come on and you've got everything powered up on there, simply reverse that cable down there. But all in all, I have a feeling my daughter is gonna love this. Hours of fun to play around with and they're fairly easy to turn off when you get to the end of the video like this. Well, thumbs up if you like this video, guys. Post any comments you might have in the comment section below the video and hit the circle below to subscribe. And if you do hit the circle, don't forget to hit the bell.